So the decision matrix um, is a very detailed tool and it is supposed to help you during the process of, um, you know, getting fees implemented at your facility. Um, one big part is convincing your facility that this is a good idea. And that's why, you know, we created the break even analysis tool, the cost comparison tool to hopefully help you a little bit um, illustrating those numbers and how they work and how, you know, um, a hospital can benefit from the cost savings or in some scenarios from, you know, the, the billing and, and breaking even with the equipment and actually getting a positive return on investment. Another part of this process is, of course, for you to um, decide what equipment is a good fit. And this is where we uh, created this average decision matrix that works for fees equipment. And it's not specific to PADCOM equipment. Uh, this honestly would work uh, for any other equipment, even if you took hours out. Um, hopefully you'll be looking at ours, but um, this is a very neutral tool and it lives off of the, the input that you give to it. And, and there's a few steps involved. Um, step number one is we have to give um, weights to um, these main categories that we have. And we came up with um, about 14 main categories that you might wanna look at uh, when considering buying fees and strobe equipment. And um, in step one, you're gonna give um, different weights to the different main criteria. Um, the way that we give the weights is we just take 100 points and we distribute them amongst those uh, main criteria. That's step one. Step two is for each of those main criteria, we have uh, a number of sub criteria where again, you're gonna give them different weights. In that case, we're gonna have 10 points um, within each main criteria to give to these sub criteria. We'll do that. That's step two. Once you have given all these weights, you basically told the system what your priorities are, right? How important is price to you? How important is image quality to you? And it puts it in a ratio um, and all relevant to each other. And uh, so when you're done with the second step, that's when you start putting the information in for each of the options. So the, the companies, the vendors that you talk to and look at, and then you uh, score those and you score them not based on an overall feeling. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, I like, uh, you know, PatCon, I like Christoph. Um, but you actually do that per sub criteria. So very, very detailed. You look at, you know, one single question um, at a time and give a score to the different options. And by doing that, you're really breaking out, uh, breaking down this decision made, uh, this decision making process into little little bites, without worrying about you know what is the outcome uh, going to be in the beginning. And then once you fill that all out, then this tool actually gives you the breakdown: who gets the most points, um, total and per main criteria. And then uh, you've not only made an objective approach and hopefully come to an objective decision for yourself, but you also have the ability to show this to your administration um, to, you know, just illustrate that you really put a lot of thought into this and that, you know, whatever option is the best for you uh, will work really well. Okay. So um, I'm going to ready here. I'm just sitting on our acute care system to do all this. Um, and let's get started. So step one is um, maybe putting our options in here, right? So you can put up to five options. Um, as I said, hopefully you'll look at our system, but um, others, you know, you might have company A, company B, company P, company J, something like this. And those are all your options. Now we're gonna go through the main criteria, look at them, and we're gonna distribute 100 points to these main criteria. There's a little instruction here on the right-hand side that say, okay, step one, distribute exactly 100 points to the main criteria. The main criteria are those in, in bold here that you see surprise, and if we scroll down, payment options, et cetera. I'm gonna make this a tiny bit bigger, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so first main criteria is price. Now, how important is price? Um, I can tell you that 90% of the facilities that approach us for fees equipment are looking for fees equipment for the first time. Um, and it's been like that for years and years. Now, if that is the case, what does that tell you? It, it tells you that oftentimes um, facilities won't get approved for um, budget for fees equipment in a year one. You know, I just got off a, of a call with an SLP that had implemented a program and it took four years. So certainly the price really matters because the big reason of not getting any fees equipment um, you know, if you try to get the budget, is it's too expensive or budget and, and money is spent on something else. So, um, you know, I strongly believe that, that a great price point, something below $20,000 really for, for fees um, is very important. And, you know, when you, when you look at um, government purchases where in, in, in public purchasing, an approach like that is sometimes used where they, um, you know, put weights to the different criteria. You usually see, um, you know, sometimes 50% of the weight go into the price and then the 50% go into the technical part. Um, I don't want to go quite as high on the price maybe, but, you know, maybe we'll put 35 in here. So that means 35 points go um, uh, to, to the price and the, that's the weight that we put on the price. Then we go um, to the next main category here, payment options. So this is, you know, your um, financing solutions. Is there a rental option? Is there um, leasing? Is there a volume discount? If we do this from an inpatient perspective, which is uh, what uh, most of you are working in, I think right now, um, you know, financing, we don't care in a hospital. We, we're going to buy the equipment. Renting, we don't care maybe. So um, volume discount might be the only thing. Overall, the payment option might not be as important. So I'm, I'm just going to give it, you know, three points right here. That might be enough. So then we go to the next main criteria. Again, bold here, right? Image quality. Image quality is, of course, very important uh, when we do instrumental assessment with fees. So here, uh, you know, knowing that we have 14 categories, um, we'll maybe put 15 points on this right here. And I can always scroll up and see how many points I've given so far. We had 53 points here. And of course you can, after you put all the points in, you can change things around um, as you go. Um, endoscope quality, you know, things like diameter, uh, rounded tip of the scope, how is the toggle and these kind of things. Um, how important is that to me? I'm gonna give this, eight points right now. So, you know, when I, when I give these points, um, you know, it's, it's initially maybe a little bit of gut feeling, but of course this is something where you want to sit down and, and really give it some thought. We're trying to pack, you know, a few weeks of work into like an hour uh, webinar. So that's why we got to do it a little, little bit quick, but, um, but you would certainly want to take your time and see what makes the most sense. Uh, the camera quality, what's the resolution? Is there fine focus, the weight? camera control, et cetera. I'm not scoring it. I'm simply saying like, how important are these aspects um, to me when buying uh, fees equipment? Uh, so again, that's um, you know pretty important stuff. I'm gonna give this another eight points here. And then uh, my light source, um, is it integrated or not? Um, how's the brightness? What type of light is it? Um, how important is that? And that kind of stuff. I'll give it another eight points here. Uh, the computer that comes with the system and if it comes with the system, what's the model, uh, what's the processor, uh, service on the computer, these kind of things. How important is that to me? You know, uh, relatively to the image quality and such, maybe not as important. So I'll give it four points for now. Then we get to the software, um, you know, and, and software capabilities, fast forward, backwards, slow motion, both directions. Um, frame by frame review, these kind of things are, you know, in my opinion, very, very important for fees um, because you spend more time uh, with the software than anything else, right? More than holding the scope and that review process is very important. So I give it a 10 points right here. And then um, I'll keep going. Portability, you know, is a portable case, rolling cart, um, what's the weight of it? 
whether you're you know, a mobile fees provider and you want something very portable or uh, in a hospital, I think mobility and portability is actually quite important. Um, you know, because you're doing an assessment bedside and you gotta move this stuff around. So having something lightweight that wheels easily, you know, that's, uh, that's an, an important part. So maybe we'll give it six points here. Um, you know, and uh, we'll get to the cleaning, um, you know, things like compatibility. And that's, a, um, that's sort of a mandatory thing, right? Uh, it has to be compatible with clean, cleaning in that sense that it will be important. But other than, is it compatible with what we have? You know, do I care so much and how much weight to, uh, do I put uh, to the cleaning? Um, let's get five points for now. And then service quality. What's the response time? Is that a loaner program? Um, the technical service is uh, are things included or charged for separately? So usually, you know, service and the the people that you work with uh, fairly important. Let's give it ten points, uh, and we might go over in points so that we have to adjust things a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, warranty, you know, any system comes with a warranty. Usually, it's one years, uh, one year or two years, because warranty is always just on manufacturer's defect and workmanship, meaning that a manufacturer says everything was done properly when it was being made. Um, you know, a year is usually enough. Maybe it's nice to have a second year, but the importance of it overall is, you know, um, not the highest maybe. So let's give it three points. And uh, then let's go to training, technical training on the equipment. Um, what about clinical training, competency training? Are these all things that... Um, uh, you know, uh, a vendor will help with. And how important is that stuff to me? If we already trained everyone, you know, we don't need anything other than equipment, this will not be as uh, important. If it's a new program and nobody has, has done any training yet, this becomes much more important, right? So um, let's just give it seven points for now. And then uh, video stroboscopy here, um, you know, Maybe it's a nice to have, maybe mostly I'm looking at fees, but I do like the idea of video strobe. So, you know, let's give it three points. And that is actually our last main criteria. So now I have to go back up and check my overall points here, 125. So I gave away 25 points too much. This field here has to turn green and it will when we reach exactly 100 points. So I'm gonna go through and I have to take away 25 points, right? So pricing um, and the price, I'll say, we'll give it 30 points. Um, all right, well, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, might have to do the others first, um, but yeah, we'll come back to the 30 point. We need another 20. So, um, you know, let's take three out here. Um, out here, I'm gonna have four, um, six, and, um, let's do seven here. I want to point out again that you would go, you know, through this and, and think about all the main criteria uh, and not just sort of, um, you know, do this randomly. If it appears a little bit randomly, it's because I want to show you that, yes, we need to get to 100 points, but you would sit down and say, okay, you know, we'll have to take our 25 points. What makes the most sense? And, you know, certainly in discussion with your colleagues and all of that. Uh, let's see where we're at now. Um, okay, so we only need seven points. We can get that from here maybe. I think 28 is the score that will give price. So now you see 100 points have been distributed to all the main criteria. This turns green and this is my confirmation that we've done that first step um, properly. All right, so now that we've done this, you're gonna let this go. Um, save it and you give it a, uh, a few days before do, doing the next step, which is going in and 
looking at the sub criteria and distributing these 10 points. So the, the process is very similar. Um, under these main criteria, you'll see that um, we have these sub criteria and we need to distribute 10 points per main criteria to these sub ones. Um, and then this field here and every field uh, under those criteria will turn green once we have 10. Okay, so look at price. There are things like, um, you know, the system price or your initial purchase price. What about endoscope replacement costs, repair costs, maintenance costs? So you see that, uh, you know, you could just say like, how much is the system and compare it. But um, if you break it down into these more detailed sub criteria, you are able to, to get a more detailed objective view of, uh, of things and that can really help in the long run. Um, Something I want to mention: once you get to these, um, you know, sub criteria, um, when you ask your colleagues, other SLPs, for you know their feedback with different companies, I think that's a great thing. That's very important. What I sometimes um, see is that these questions are rather general. Right? It's like, what equipment do you use, and how do you like it? And you'll get an answer. It's like, you know, I use this equipment, and I like it a lot. And another person says, I like. Um, have this equipment and it's great or not great or whatever the case may be. But if you have these sub criteria now, you'll be able to ask very specific questions, right? You can ask things um, that are not just like, what do you use and how do you like it, but very specific. How do you like the toggle? How do you like, you know, the, um, the setup? How do you like the software um, specifically and why? And these things, I think that really helps you to, to get a better um, overall idea of what a system is like. All right, so let's give the weights now to the sub criteria. Uh, system price might be the uh, most important aspect. They'll give it uh, five points here and then replacement cost for the endoscope give it a point, repair cost uh, a point and uh, we'll give maintenance a point and shipping cost um, one point and cost of ownership one point. So you might do this differently. As you can see, you do have decimals points here. So two points um, that you can go 0.75 um, as you distribute these points. So you get the idea though, that ultimately you wanna to get to 10 and then this field turns green. And um, this way, you know that this step is done and you go to the next one, payment option, 10 points again. Um, if you're in a hospital, we don't care about financing, we don't care about rental, then we would give the whole 10 points to volume discount, right? What if we, you know, buy uh, more equipment in the future? What if we buy two systems? Will we get a discount and all that? Um, then we're moving on to image quality. This can be broken down to all these different aspects here. Image uh, re re uh, resolution, give this four points. Image brightness, maybe three points, focal range. Uh, two points uh, and um, image size. So how, how do you like the um, image size on the screen? You know, we have one more point to give. So I'm going to give this half a point and the image color half a point as an example. You don't have to give everything a point. You could leave something at zero if something doesn't matter to you at all. Um, also note that you have these additional option criteria fields here. If there's something that's important to you and that's not listed in the tool, you can use these lines and just override it and, and you know, whatever the case may be that you're looking at and then give that a weight as well. All right, so endoscope quality, diameter, rounded tip, these kind of things. Um, you know, the diameter, um, how important is that to me? I might give it three points. Um, rounded tip, um, actually to me personally, more important than, uh, than the diameter really for patient comfort. Um, Others might say it's, it's a nice to have, but let's give it three points. How comfortable is the, the toggle? Um, I think that's also quite important. And then, um, you know, let's say we have one more point to give. So again, I'm gonna give half a point to the easy setup and half a point to stroboscopy capability. If this is just something that maybe we're looking at down the road. A camera quality, uh, the resolution, give that five points. The, the fine focus capability, is that something that is available with a camera or not, give that three points. The camera weight, um, uh, you know, because the overall weight of the equipment will be important, you're holding that camera. 
Uh, maybe give that one point. Camera control. Um, give that, um, you know, maybe point two points. And we have camera exposure settings and shutter technology left. I'm just going to give it point four and point four. That gets it gets me to ten. Uh, camera exposure. Uh, can be important for just after the whiteout. Um, if you have a camera that um, is has manual exposure, you will be able to get a, a, a few frames extra because the light will be um, not um, trying to to um, adjust itself. Um, and then shutter technology is for uh, video stroke only, right? Or it's only important when you do want to do video stroke because if you do, then you want a global shutter camera, not just a rolling shutter. All right, so then we're moving on to the next one here, the light source and uh, breaking down, you know, the importance of these different sub criteria, whether or not it's integrated or external. Do I care or do I not care? I might care a little bit and I say, okay, two points here, the brightness, most important part maybe for me, six points there. Um, the ability to adjust the light, I'll give it a point. And then the light technology, is, I give that a point as well. All right, so uh, moving on to the computer. And what computer model? Does it matter, does it not matter? Maybe this doesn't matter to me. And the computer processor, uh, on the other hand, is quite important. And then the computer service, so what, what will happen if something happens to the computer and will the vendor take care of it? Um, I'll give that, um, you know, maybe one and a half points and then half a point to the size of the computer. Okay, we got to 10. So then the software, um, we break it down, fast forward, slow motion, frame by frame, all very important things. Um, you know, maybe frame by frame might be um, the most important one and then we'll do two points and two for fast forward, slow motion each, still image capturing two points, and then uh, video with synchronized audio. You see, we have a lot of kind of sub criteria here. So we really want to be kind of careful with our points, but um, uh, you know, let's say we fill it out like this, and then we would say post editing, data collection, DICOM capability, integrated reporting, archiving wouldn't matter to me. But that's unrealistic. Reporting is always important, right? So I might go back and say, you know what? Uh, we'll give two points to the frame by frame, and I have to give a point to uh, the integrated reporting because it is important to me. Now we are at ten, and that's fine. We can just leave other criteria that we don't want to use at zero. Portability-wise, um, let's say we're in acute care, portable case not really that important, although our system actually comes with a case, even if you get the acute care card. So let's give it a point. And then the rolling card, um, seven points, and then um, maybe one point to the overall weight to it. So even if it's nothing to lift up, but the weight of this matters uh, as far as how easy it is to push it around. And then flexibility means like, can you switch between one setup easily to the other? Because you might be in an inpatient setting, but what if you have an outpatient across the street that you also want to go to, right? That's where it's nice to get off the card and, um, you know, into a portable case sometimes. So we'll give the last point to that flexibility. Uh, cleaning. Um, you know, we will just give the 10 points here to compatibility is, of course, important. Um, cleaning in service, quite important. And then the last one for instructions for use. The reason that that's in here is because the way that they're worded actually um, makes a difference how easy it will be for you to get things approved with infection control and, and, and just process. So um, that's why uh, it's part of this. Uh, now we're getting to service and uh, breaking it down, response time, loaner program, these kind of things. Response time, in my opinion, is probably the most important part about service. If you have an issue, you want someone to be available right away, right? Ideally, I have a phone number, cell phone number of a representative that I can call and just start explaining my issue, as opposed to calling some main line and being transferred a few times and all of that. Um, so response time may be um, pretty important. A loaner program uh, might be important to me. The technical in-service. Um, Give that 
um, half a point support coverage. So um, is a rep always available or nine to five or what's the deal there? You know, and how important is that uh, to me? And give that a point and then remote service. So can someone log into your system and do things a point and then uh, physical distance, you know, how, how close is a rep to you? And is that important to you? With fees equipment, of course, we, um, you know, most of this stuff, if it actually ever needs servicing, that has to be done at the factory. Uh, so in that sense, it, the, the benefit of having someone very close by uh, might be relative there. But um, anyways, we'll give that 2.5 points and then um, the knowledge 2.5, uh, 2.5. Knowledge representative, that's just talking about, you know, how much does your rep know about the specifics of fees because that varies between companies, right? Some are uh, more focused on what uh, um, SLPs do and some others kind of do it um, amongst other things, but don't really have the focus and things, you know, will be easier for you if you have someone that really understands what you're doing with all of this. Uh, warranty, we have length coverage and extended warranty. So give uh, four points here, four points here, two points here, maybe. Um, then we'll get to training, um, the technical training to clinical competency training. Um, so maybe I'll give four to the technical training, meaning how to use this equipment, right? How to plug everything in, how to use the software, how to set it up so that you feel very comfortable um, with these kind of things. Uh, clinical training, um, you know, is, is that in, in any way uh, included uh, with the purchase or does the company offer something and then uh, competency training um, as well? So just give, do that as an example. And then our last section here is the video stroboscopy um, where, you know, we might put different weights and different sub criteria. Adjustable slow motion speed. It's a nice to have feature, but might not be the most important. Microphone options, in my opinion, much more important. Having a body sound adapter that allows you to pick up fundamental frequency um, based on vibration and not just volume, I think is very important. Um, so we, we might give this five points and then um, maybe two points to portability of the equipment and two points to the display of decibel and the frequency to kind of work with the equipment in for further evaluation as well. Um, okay, so now we went through, we gave all the weights to the sub criteria, and that step two is done. Now what we do is we save the file and we let it go, right? You don't wanna do all of this in one sitting. It, uh, it'll tire you out um, pretty fast. And you wanna go through things with a fresh mind. Also now that you've filled out these weights, now is the, uh, the time that it's good to start speaking to all these different vendors, right? And you might, you might not be looking at five, you might be looking at two or three, but uh, whatever the case may be, you have them in here. And then um, you can use this tool also as a guideline to speak to them, right? Um, you'll do, like usually what we do is um, we'll have a phone conversation to kind of get an initial understanding of, of your situation. Um, and then we'll, um, you know, answer a lot of questions via email, but then we'll also do uh, a Zoom call where we show the equipment. And, um, you know, now that things are getting better with COVID, going back to traveling, so then comes an on-site visit. And as you go, you kind of talk about these things I want to try to cover as much as possible. But you can really use this as a guideline also to talk to your representatives and hopefully they'll be able to give, give you a lot of answers to these questions. You can use these um, fields here to, um, you know, type answers in if you want to, um, and to, to kind of get, you know, the information uh, in here, or you can do that separately. Then what we really need to do is we need to score the response for each option. So for every system and every rep that you talk to, you're going to go into these uh, yellow squares and you're going to score the response um, for a particular option. Right? And this is what we're going to do next. Um, so starting with the price, my option one, pack or medical, how do I like the price? And, you know, one of, one of our goals is always to be uh, very competitive uh, in price. And like I mentioned before, I strongly believe that 
equipment for fees should be less than twenty thousand dollars. So it is one of our main focuses. So usually, I think people would say that, yeah, that is a really good price, and give, you know, maybe um, or hopefully some like eight points here. So then I uh, I have company A that um, might have a good price, um, but not quite as good. So maybe I give six points here. Um, maybe option B is um, very expensive. So as far as price is concerned, I would not score them very high. Um, and then, um, you know, maybe those somewhere in the middle. Okay, so this is for the initial purchase price. Then we're looking at endoscope replacement cost. What does that look like? Um, ours is $5,000. Another vendor might say it's um, 10,000 and then another 8,000. So again, based on this, you would score here and said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll do um, my points like this here. Repair cost, what's a typical repair cost? How, how much does that cost? Usually you can distinguish between something very basic that you detect early uh, without contamination on the inside. Uh, in our case, it's just a couple hundred dollars uh, worth of repair. And then if something that, that more severe happens, you wanna figure that out. And you can ask um, these questions to representatives and you should uh, get an idea of um, what typical repairs might cost. Um, that out and uh, maintenance cost um, most of the equipment is actually maintenance free but um, you know if there is some maintenance how much does it cost um, I'll just say fill that out shipping cost maybe I'm happy sort of equally with all of those and then cost of ownership you know, say give us four points here, um, four points here, four points there. So put that in. Cost of ownership, of course, just kind of trying to figure out how much it's gonna cost you for the entire time that you own the equipment, right? So over five or 10 years or whatever um, you're looking at. All right, so then uh, we'll go to, on to, to payment options. And um, as you, Remember, you only gave 10 points for the volume discount. So now we're also only going to fill out this line. I'm going to say, okay, um, is there a volume discount with us? Because our pricing is pretty um, competitive to begin with. We don't have a whole lot of the volume discount, a little bit if it's, if it's really multiple systems, but you know, you might score, score us, uh, you know, only like a four here, whereas this company, um, might be at five and maybe this company here if you buy multiple systems gives you a huge discount so in that sense you go through and fill this out um, appropriately um, and then we go on to image quality so now you might like our image quality good maybe you like this one better and so you fill this out and then you do the same thing for all the others. Okay, I'm just kind of filling those out a little bit quicker now. Because you I think you get the idea at this point how this um, works, you score uh, the information, the responses that you get from each of the, uh, the vendors um, in, in the scoring system here. And while you do this, you you know, because you're separating it from the weights that you gave earlier, you, you don't have to do as much thinking, right? You don't have to think, um, okay, how do I like the response and how important uh, is that response as far as relatively speaking to all the other things that I need to know. You can really separate it, put it in little packages and right now only focus on that one answer to that one question and how do you score that? Um, okay. So fill this out, great. And we'll move on to the endoscope quality. Uh, here diameter, I think the one where we're really good, have a pretty small diameter compared to others. Maybe this is huge. Rounded tip, that's something we do have. Well, this might not have it, some might. Comfortable toggle, I think. Um, 
you would like ours. Run this app. Maybe set up. Stravosky, we can put other things definitely here. Um, oh, you can put zero if you want. Maybe they have good focal points, whatever the case may be. Camera quality. Pull this out. Uh, we got fine focus. Wait. So again, we're scoring the higher points, the better, right? You score between zero and 10, and um, that way um, decide what's best for you. So just uh, grab this out there. Guide it through here. Oh, it's okay. No, here, here, here. That's not going to fit. No? No, there's oh, not okay. enough slack. Sorry about that, we're just running out of battery. Okay, this is good. Perfect, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, all right, uh, camera control we're at. So filling this out. Yeah, I, I've actually pre-filled some of them down there because this part, you know, can get a little bit lengthy. And again, it's nothing that you have to do in one sitting, right? You do that over time. This is a tool that can really grow as you use it for several weeks, probably, or longer uh, to figure things out. And you can always go back and change things around, right? When you decide to, um, you know, then you learn that something has become actually less important or more important than you had previously thought. Um, okay, so three more to fill out here. So bear with me. Um, light source here. Um, yep. Field. Okay, here we go. Oh, this one. Field that doesn't work, so we'll fix that. Okay. fill out between zero and one. If, if I actually put 11, it won't allow me to do that, right? It will tell you between zero and 10. So there in the tool, it, it will prevent you from, from doing something that you're not supposed to based on, on the algorithm behind this. All right. And then as a reminder, additional option criteria, that's where you fill in your own criteria per main, main uh, um, criteria we're looking at if there's something that we haven't covered with the things that we're looking at. All right, let's do the computer here real quick. The processor. Just scoring away here. And you can use the tab key, by the way, on the keyboard, uh, I'm using the tab key. You won't do it like that, right? You won't run through it like I do. Um, but give it a little bit more thought, but um, it's certainly possible to tap through it. Okay. And then we have software. Those are all very important features that, you know, if you don't have them uh, at all, then for something you might probably put zero points here or if it only goes one direction, maybe half points or something like that. Um, slow motion, uh, both direction, of course, um, important to have. Frame by frame. And how does it work? Still image capturing. And again, one of those things that are absolutely crucial when you do your fees. And then video with synchronized audio, you know, having that audio to uh, hear your trial announcement, um, also quite important and something that you want to check with the systems, how they do it. You know, is it integrated microphone or an external microphone? Is it, um, or is it not possible at all and whatnot? Those are zero. Beg your pardon? Oh, yeah. Zero. Thank you, Richard. Uh, it's always good to have a second set of eyes. So uh, if this is zero, then there's no point in filling this out. 
because it would all be multiplied by zero and remain zero. Um, okay, so I see here uh, integrated reporting got one more point, so we're gonna put this in here. All right, and then move on to portability, uh, portable case. Um, this is the lightest way that I know of. Um, All right. Wait. And the flexibility that I mentioned before, can you move between different um, setups between a card and a portable system? Okay. All right. And then I pre-filled these here, a uh, few more categories beforehand just to not make this too, too long for you to watch right now. Um, but same idea, right? You go through it and you really score for every vendor that you look at, every little sub-criteria. You do that over the course of several weeks and what do you get is um, your dashboard. Now that we're done filling all of this out and we, we've done the three steps, and make sure you always save the file, you go to your result dashboard here, okay? And now, you get a very, um, very good detailed idea of based on the weights that you gave to main criteria and sub criteria and based on the scoring that you gave to every one of the vendors um, per these sub criteria, this is the scoring that you see, right? So uh, total score right here. So in this case, uh, we would be at 71 and something. Uh, it is percent because it's all in the hundred um, here. Uh, but we would have that score of 71 and then um, so 100 would be the highest possible score. And then it has, uh, you know, it goes from dark green, high score to light green to, um, to orange, um, so to yellow, orange, and then red, right? So that would be the ranking here. Now this would be the total score. And you can say like, okay, looks good. Paco might be the best option here, or the outcome could be a different one if you put different weights on things and if you give different scoring. And then um, it will also break it down per sub criteria. So while, you know, uh, we see, okay, price is a winner here with Paco.m um, for payment options, um, it's actually last in line, right? Because we, we had said that uh, you know only the, the volume discount counted for us, and that's something Paccom isn't strong in. So for that sub criteria, um, we see okay, it, company isn't doing so well. So now I think you can really have a very thorough uh, conversation with your management. You know that that maybe doesn't have the time to look at everything in detail. You you know because you go there and set up. Uh, I decided that Paccom is the best fit for us. And the question is, why? <laughs> why is that? I said, well, let me show you. I uh, looked at five different options. I talked to all these uh, vendors and, and asked them all these questions. And I can really see that, uh, you know, overall, this is the best option. And even where they don't perform so well, like payment options, you know, maybe it's not as important to me. And um, this nicely kind of breaks it down and shows you the different options and um, you know if you do it in, in multiple steps you might um, you know even be talking to the top two companies or something like that um, for for further discussion so you can I think utilize this in in several ways that way um, yeah so this is basically it uh, let me just put it in a nutshell one more time um, the the four steps I guess you could say step one is you have main criteria, uh, these 14, I believe, that we have, and you want to give them weights. Right? So it's the weighted average decision matrix. That's how that works. Um, and in our case, we just take 100 points and you distribute them amongst the main criteria, step one. Then let it go. A couple of days later, step two, give points and weights to the sub-criteria. And you always want to get to these 10 points per um, criteria. Uh, that's step two. When you're done with that, let it go. Now comes step three, your scoring. So this is where over time, you know, you, you put in the scoring per sub criteria, per um, option or vendor that you have. 
And um, when you're done with that, step four is go to the result dashboard, um, you know, look at the numbers, present them, and just have a good understanding of, um, you know, what might be the, the best fit for you. All right, so thank you very much for uh, sitting through this with me. I know it can be a little bit dry, but I honestly think that, um, uh, you know, the tool can help you along the way um, in, in many different ways. If you have questions, if you have questions now, please post them in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. If um, you have questions later on, if you have my uh, personal contact information, please reach out. If you don't, you can always email info at um, and they'll get to the right place. And um, yeah, then I'll be uh, hopefully seeing you again soon, whether that be in a one-on-one -on -one discussion or in, in one of the other webinars, that'd be great. And then uh, last but not least, we are gonna post these webinars online um, second week of May or so when we've gone through all of those. All right, any questions in the chat? Okay, great. If there are no questions, uh, thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. Um, have a great day and hopefully we'll talk soon. Okay, bye.